What's your favorite scary movie? Do you ever fantasize about damn enchiladas? That's much too vulgar display of power, Karen. Let me ask you one question. Are you having fun? We all go a little mad sometimes. Because <laughs> I promise you, <laughs> I promise you, you and I are going to have some fun. Oh, no. It is time to keep your appointment with the Wicker Man. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Shut up, you bitch hog. Game over. Um, I want to start today's official broadcast of the Dreadcast by making a statement for Go us. I, I'm, and I'm speaking on behalf of you. Um, yeah. The 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre is <laughs> the best Texas Chainsaw Massacre iteration there ever it is. It, there is and there ever uh, yeah. will be. Um, the 2003 remake is superb. It's probably up there in top five uh top 10 horror remakes because we're going to be talking about one today uh-huh. um but uh-huh. it's 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 not better than the original it's no not and the... anybody that says so on twitter is a moron yeah yeah uh, i just wanted <laughs> to get that out there because i know that's um... <laughs> what we that's what you're angling at we've seen some absolute yeah, you just... ridiculous takes on that about that recently i think one of the things that bothered me about one of those takes was the the wording of the remake doing laps laps implies it's mm. superior so, so it's not so just a little bit yeah. yeah it's not just a little bit better no it, I, I, I won't have that yeah no and there was there were various comments to the original being boring and it's, oh and, it, and it's God, just like yes if that's your opinion you are a child like grow up you're How... also you're entitled to it but you're wrong yeah but you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like, oh, it's boring. Nothing happens. I, clearly, you're not mentally, um, you don't have the mental capacity to appreciate it or understand it or mm. you know, fit emotionally with the tone and all everything that's actually going on. You just look at it going, "Where's the no like explosions or nothing?" You just wanted Michael Bay doing jump Texas scares. Chainsaw Massacre and jump because scares and stupid, yeah. Jump scares do not happen all the time in real life grounded in reality situations do mm. <laughs> psychopathic families exist yeah. not yeah uh, absolutely that like doesn't stupid happen. fed up with these stupid takes and i'll fight anybody i'm going I'll... on record i will fight you give them a bunch of fives <laughs> to tell you that you're wrong <laughs> anyway wanted to get that psa out there yeah um, that's fair because because i feel like we got lots to talk about today i know i have Mm-hmm. No, we have lots to talk about today. So welcome back to the Dreadcast. We're getting that out there. I don't think we said that last time. I don't think we even introduced it last time. We went straight into talking about we the picture from the Black Lagoon. People, people know why they're here. They know who um, we are. The, they, know, they know who we are? They uh, se- at 78? Episode 78? Oh, he's, he's on it. He's straight away. Hey, I told you. I told you. I have, I've got my notes ready. I've got everything he's, set up for this. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I mean, um, you were very confident about what episode number it was on a previous episode though and it turned out to be wrong <laughs> it was very wrong yeah, it's very wrong but, <laughs> but i'm I've... gonna assume i'm gonna assume you're right I've... this time what i've learned from that is you just keep going and don't admit you're yeah. wrong yeah, i could That's be wrong but just, just be confident just keep going it's like walking it's like walking anywhere with a high vis and a clipboard i could get anywhere mm-hmm. as long as i'm confident I'll just keep going this is my high vis and clipboard 78 whatever fine uh so, my name is tom so lovely adam who now has more hair than me weirdly um no, that needs sorting out. <laughs> I noticed that. Yeah. Not not keen. Um few 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 points of interest to get into before big film today. Big film. It is a big film. Because today, it's been a it? while. It's been a while since we've done a big mm-hmm. a big film, which I feel like I know I we don't need to go uh by minute by minute storyboard beat, basis. Beat, scene no. by scene. We, because if you're listening to this you know the film very. You should know the film very well. Yeah. Or at least, yeah, I, I didn't. Wa- I haven't actually watched this film because I've seen it so many times. The only thing I don't know are the characters. I always forget the characters' names, so I've got a list oh, to remember. The, <laughs> I have. A, I have a point about that. That there are a lot of. Yeah. I mean, they don't stick around long enough to really get to know them, and they've all got such weird names as well. Yeah, they have. Um, first thing I want to talk to you about. I watched Terrified. Why? Oh, 
Yes. There we go, folks. Yes, yes, there yes. we go. There we go. On yes. my recommendation. On your <laughs> recommendation. <laughs> I was like, hmm, that's familiar to me. Why is that familiar to me? Yeah, isn't it good? Or, well, did you think it was good? What did you think of it? <laughs> isn't it? It's good, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I... I really liked it. I did like it. Mm-hmm. I felt the story was a little bit everywhere mm, yeah, uh, okay. at times. I felt a bit confused at times. Yeah, that's fine. But that's fine. Uh, it had the same sort of tone as when yeah. it, where, when evil lurks. Like it, it just goes. Um, when evil lurks is better, but this is still good. I would still yeah. recommend this to people. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I didn't quite get it, uh, and that uh, maybe that's just me. Um, like there, there, there's a possession happening on this street, right? There's an, there's an evil, like we have on Evil Lurks. There's just an evil, and we said it when we briefly talked about that. Like the world knows about possessions and uh, exorcisms; they know it, that happens. Yeah. This, this is the same. Like these, these, these sort of exorcists or specialists in this subject, um, come to take care of the evilness wherever it is. That this is yeah. an existing thing in this world, right? This isn't like a it- new paranormal. It is, but I feel like we're in the. I think feel like we're in terrified. It's the earlier stages of something. Mm. Like that was the impression I got. Is like so. For, for for those of you who don't know, Terrified is a 2017 movie, mm-hmm. um, directed by is it Damien Damien Rugner, um, yeah, something like that. It's yeah, Argentine <laughs> uh, Argentine horror, and it, it's a, it's a prequel of sorts to. Yeah. Uh, when evil lurks, that obviously on the channel, me and Tom. Go loved. watch when evil lurks. It was our it was our number one film of last year, and yeah, we were we were big up on that film. Yes. Um, and this is I say a prequel of sorts. It's it's set within this. There's no carryover follow through of the characters, but it's set in the same world. Um, and yeah, I just got the impression that it was like earlier. So this was maybe like one of the first instances yeah. of some sort of paranormal activity. It's very different kind of paranormal activity. This is kind of different reality based. Yeah, yeah, it is. And and again, this is why I think like it's a it or I suppose it's fair to say when evil looks is a loose sequel because mm, it's mm, although it takes place in the same world. Yeah, it's obviously maybe developed a little bit more as uh, since the since terrified, and yeah, it's different or we're looking at a different demon and there's different things happening and i suppose you know you can have potentially have different kinds of hauntings hauntings but yeah it does take uh it is different yeah so there there were a few things i'm not gonna go into it too much because i've got a lot to talk about but there were a few things i like the beginning of it where our what was at the beginning seemed to be our main character um his wife possessed being flung about the bathroom yeah that was very visceral Mm -hmm. that was a great shot but then he's kind of out of it for the rest of the film. We go to like a backstory mm-hmm. for what, how all this possession happened. Then I'm trying to, I'm, 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 I'm trying to work out is all this possession coming from the water? Because they they focus a lot on the water in this this film. They do, and they ask about whether the people are drunk from the taps yeah. and things. Yeah, it's uh, it's very so isolated there is allu- to the street. There is an illusion that that's that's what's happened. Mm. Um, but again, I suppose when evil lurks, we don't get a whole lot of. We don't set no. up or backstory. I mean, when we talked about that movie at the time, one of the things I I said was I want to see more in this world, and I feel like I got it with Terrified. It, yeah, not not a huge amount more. It doesn't answer a lot of questions or explain a whole lot more, but it's it, it's more it is more in that world, and it is a sort of expansion on it. And yeah, uh, yeah, I really I really liked it. There were some genuinely like shocking moments as well, um, and yeah, you know. If you if you've seen when evil lurks, you know that that film doesn't hold back in terms oh, of God, yeah. what it shows you and what happens to characters and things like that. And I'd say he's, he definitely followed on from sort of what he set up in Terrified as well. There's, a, there's a improved few, on it for sure. Few, yeah, definitely improved on it. There's a few similar moments as well where you think, oh, they're not going to do that, and yeah, they do that. You mean um, the bus, the bus. I definitely mean the bus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, there was also there was there was I remember one specific good jump scare that really got me. And I, it was, I was like happy that was a good jump scare. So one I'm... of one of the exorcists, exorcists. I'm just going to call him an exorcist. There was three uh-huh. of them looking out of a window, and some of these these um, entities or demons, whatever you want to call them, 
mm-hmm. you could only see through a certain angle. Yeah. And it's, it's in like another a... house across the road, and he's looking through his window, looks to the left, looks to the right, it's there, looks to the left, looks to the right, it's there, looks to the left, to the right. It's there at the window. There, yeah, that got me as Didn't well. see that good. coming. Very good. <laughs> very, very good. Um, if a jump scare's done right, yeah, yeah a little applause. They can, yeah, they can, that's it. They're not overdone, and they can be used. They can yeah. be used effectively. And yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Oh no, I'm glad. I'm glad you liked it because, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, it had been on my, it had been on a to watch list for a while, and I was like, oh, I'll get around to it at some point. And then I'd, I don't know if I'd seen some like duff reviews of it, or mm. I'd read a couple of things saying like, oh, it's it's not that good. And I thought, oh well, I'm not in any desperate rush to watch it. But then one no, seen when evil lurks and found out that that was technically a prequel to it. Mm. I thought, oh yeah, I'll, I'll definitely check it out. And I'm glad, I think glad the I problem it. with it was that we watched Evil Look when Evil Looks first for me. Yeah. If we, if I'd yeah. say go watch Terrified first, then watch When Evil Looks, but don't think of them as a carry on. Think of them no. as maybe the no, same not, universe. I mean, not. Yeah. But you want you want your dessert after your main. Yeah. Or your starter first. You know, Terrify <laughs> actually start, and then you get your main or dessert yeah. after When Evil Looks. But no. Good, uh, good recommendation. I what I didn't tell you about it this week because I was like, oh, I'm going to save this. It's a good, oh, yeah. good, good little talking point. Um, so the other thing, uh, hands up, hands up, folks. Sorry. Apparently, we've been very wrong about when uh, the first omen. <laughs> um, oh yeah. We've been downplaying that for quite a f- couple of episodes now. Basically, like, mm-hmm. uh, don't yeah. It's just another. It's a prequel for an old existing another, IP. Yeah, another legacy. Latching sequel, on. Prequel. Um, but apparently, it's doing superbly and yeah, it's getting great it's really reviews good. and it's really good. So, okay, it's got Give Ralph Ineson in it. I didn't realize. Didn't know that. That's an instant. We'll watch it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, I saw his his. Well, you sent me his tweet, but I saw yeah. one of his tweets the other day um, where he was commenting on a picture of a goat about yeah, of course. how we didn't trust him or something. I was like, that's, good. that's a good tweet. Um, uh, yeah, no, apparently it is. It's uh, it's decent and worth a watch. Yep. So I'm looking looking forward to that. And not just that, uh, that and uh, Immaculate with um, every young gentleman's favourite new young actress, Sydney Sweeney, isn't it? Um, apparently Immaculate is doing very well as well so we you know spring's kicking off with Late Night with the Devil Immaculate and uh, First Omen oh yeah um, yeah horror is starting to do well and apparently we get the Maxine trailer tomorrow oh real apparently okay. it's been a long time coming um, one last thing I'd note down I don't know if you saw it have you seen Christian Bale Leto as the Frank as the monster in the new Frankenstein movie um didn't have you seen no. the didn't first watch, image didn't we not watch this did no. we not watch the trailer for this or something about this no it's then it's maggie G- G- gillenhall's uh bride of frankenstein he is the monster and he oh looks, god yeah there we the go let- oh yeah yeah he ooh. He's i'm only a little judging too. now but he looks he's very justice um not justice suicide squad jared leto joker vibes going joker, on there yeah there is there is i mean it's even as well in that sort of later joker storyline where he's re- his face yeah. has been cut off and he's reattached it. it's very very with the scars across his forehead it's, it's even really also very much what they've done to the crow in the crow remake you know yeah early 2000s emo edgelord is the the, the vibe uh, yeah, with a little bit of uh, modern day douchiness at sprinkled in. <laughs> there's a fo- there's a photo here of Christian Bale next to, uh, I mean, like sort of superimposed two images next to um, Boris Karloff as the monster, and he kind of <laughs> looks like him anyway, without any, <laughs> <laughs> without any messing up. Um, I'm just gonna send you that image because that's oh yeah, let's have a look, let's have a look. <laughs> yeah yeah I, I had to bring that up i wasn't sure if you'd seen it oh my god he does yeah he's got, he's got the the um same. bone structure yeah the same sort yeah exactly so it's just good cheekbones that's uh, that's bale from batman that looks like built up yeah quite stocky bale, yeah yeah you can just make out the cowl in the background um yeah so no i hadn't see. seen that um i mean thanks i guess <laughs> But I, I was, 
I was kind of glad when I read more into it because I I knew a Bride remake was coming, mm-hmm. but I was getting confused with who was in this and who was in Del Toro's Frankenstein, which is also coming. Del Toro's Frankenstein has um, Mia Goffin. Um, I'm not sure who else. I mean, it's a good cast though. But so I've just I've just missed all of these. <laughs> Don't say that on the mic. <laughs> You haven't. <laughs> no, I, I no. I I've seen some bits about them. Oh well, I'm a busy that's, man. That's, I'm a busy man. It hit, it hit Look, to hands up. I I I said I was wrong about the first omen. It's fine. Um, but yeah, Christian Bale Leto as the Joker monster. Um, I'm hoping we see more about it. But after the initial images of like uh bill skarsgård in the crow and then the final reveal it still mm-hmm. didn't still didn't win me over so not hoping that not holding out much hope for this but, but it's a personal opinion it's a personal opinion yeah you know i mean it might be really good it's i just i don't know I, I, do we need another frankenstein adaptation yes do we need two frankenstein we need adaptations we need lots of them um to fit him I mean, there are, there hasn't been one for a while, I suppose. But when was the last right. major one? Uh, Frankenstein movie. Um, let's have a look. Uh, oh god, I don't even know where to find how to find this. I mean, Earth I don't. I, I know there was a that they started the storyline in the Penny Dreadful series. There's also the um, Kenneth Branagh one, which I believe we talked about during the Frankenstein review. Uh, which you can find here, folks, our Frankenstein from the Monsters of Universal review. By the way, we capped that off last week, the creature from the Black Lagoon. So now you can go check out all our Monsters of Universal episodes, um, all eight of them, right here Victor, on this playlist. Victor Frankenstein from 2015 with... Um, is that Daniel Radcliffe? Uh, yep, and James McAvoy. And the, um, James McAvoy, that's his oh, name. I can't God. remember his name. I, Frankenstein from the year before. Yeah. They're probably the yeah. So it's about time oh, no, to get another one then. Frankenstein's monster from 2019 looks like it's got. Uh, so yeah, it's been ages since we've had one, so we need a new a, one. A surreal comedy mockumentary. It's got David Harbour in it and oh, Alfred God. Molina. I've never heard of this. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway, um. Yeah, it's about time the the moon the moon has passed around the earth enough times we get a new Frankenstein film. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, yeah, why not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> who, am um, I, who am I to judge? Who are you to judge? Um, but you know what's not a wait. Do you have anything before I get into it? No. So no. Do you know Make what's not awkward, a um, an awkward? <laughs> film with bad do you know what's a great film the thing <laughs> <laughs> the thing is a great the f- film 19 john carpenter's 1982 the thang the thang the thang not the, the 20 we're not here to talk thangs. talk to you today about the thing from out of what is it i always get I, um this is so bad the thing for i always called it the thing from outer space it's the thing from out of another world right Thing. Um, this is awful. It, it is from another, the thing from another world. Yeah, nineteen. Yeah, okay. Fifty-one. That's the one. Yeah, we're not here to talk about the 2011 prequel, also labeled the thing. The fucking thing. Hate. Yeah. Fucking hate when they do that. Which the thing. Is really 2000, confusing. 2011, the thing. 2018, Halloween. Scream Five, which is called Scream. It, um, even the new all the other iterations of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they just take off the the. Yeah, or they just call it Texas Chainsaw. Like, it's so mm-hmm. fucking lazy. I mean, I don't know what you would call that that prequel, other than the thing. It, I mean, the film didn't yeah. need to be made anyway, but I don't know what you would call it. It did. It didn't. No, it didn't need. To. I was discussing this after uh, with my partner after watching this last night about the because she uh, she didn't know that there was a prequel. I guess you'd call and it. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I've I'd only seen it once, and I shut up. Don't where are I don't you going? Shut up. I don't remember hating it. 
I don't, I'm not saying it's great. I don't, I don't, like I say, I've only seen it once. I've never yeah. felt any compulsion to go back and watch it again. I think that it, it's one of those things. It's like, it, it, it's a story that didn't need to be told. No. Because it, I, it, I think it does devalue the original. It devalues the first a third yeah. of the original thing because the original thing it is about the mystery of what the fuck of happened at the Norwegian yeah. base. What yeah. ju- what what came out of this big ice mm-hmm. tomb? You know, what happened yeah. to these people? We don't need to know every we backstory. Don't know. No, we don't need to know. However, I do think about, that about to click that stop recording button. <laughs> about to do it. I'm hovering. <laughs> mute, I'm hovering. <laughs> um it's it's not a story that needed to be told, but it's it, it's a story that could be told. So it's a story that, what rather than it just being some ridiculous sequel or you know they made up some nonsense that did that that didn't fit with anything. It was it was a ready made story there that could be told, like yep. what happened yep. to the Norwegian base. And I, I, I yeah, it's, all, it's I kind of respect it for that, but they didn't they they took. They they took the obvious path in the story that was there rather than try and make something very very obvious yeah up. But for the end result is basically you get the same film because it's a bunch of researchers in an yeah. Antarctic research base fighting an alien shape shifting creature. It's like you can't do anything different with it. So you know it didn't need to be told. And, and there's no stakes. No. There's no stakes because you know the what, you know the outcome. The outcome yeah. eventually. I mean, yeah, you you don't know the exact outcome because they can shoehorn in new characters that can maybe survive and leave, and you never see them again. They never appear in the, the actual thing. Uh huh. Uh-huh. They can shoehorn stuff like that in, but uh, yeah, there's no stakes, and I have very little respect for it for what they did with the effects on that. Um, yeah. We'll get on to the actual thing, but it's good to get the prequel out of the way now because we ha- we're yeah. going to talk about the prequel no matter what. It has to be talked about some way. But the what they did with the effects on that film, if you're not aware, the thing, the 982 The Thing is one of the best films for practical, gory horror effects ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you to Mr. Bottom. Is it Rick Bottom? I wrote his name down. 21-year-old Rick Bottom who did Pretty much all the effects for the original thing helped with Stan Winston because the man nearly killed himself. They did all practical effects on the prequel, um, 2011 prequel. And then, of course, studio interference were like, nah, nah, this looks dated. The kids the kids and teens like their computer-generated stuff. They like their CGI. They like their crazy mm. things. And it all got scrapped. All got replaced with pretty much, all, pretty much all of it got replaced with CGI monsters, and they look yeah. so glossy, so shiny, so fake. I mean, obviously pros- prosthetics are fake, but it's still real. It, yeah, <laughs> and it's it's yeah, this is the thing, and I, I actors say it all the time that it's far better for their performance to react to something in the room than it is to a tennis ball on a stick or you know something that's just a a stand-in for something yeah. that they'll add later best example um, is, is always gonna be uh chris um ian mckellen in the i think it's the hobbit he he broke down on set because it's just there's an image of him just oh, sitting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sitting alone on the green screen nothing else around him and he just breaks down on set because he can't, can't act like that um yeah i think with the the prequel they were they were talking about it being a combination i distinctly remember seeing something yeah. i don't know whether it was a it was like some it was some sort of making of tv spot type thing and they were they were talking about the the effects and how it was going to oh it's a combination of practical effects with with uh, and and cg the cg is just there to enhance the practical stuff we did yeah. and i remember watching the film and thinking like well that was bullshit because there is very little what looks like practical effect it's it's vastly hugely overshadowed by cgi splatter yeah um yeah I've, I've very advise little you to... of the original I advise you to go if you haven't if you, if you haven't seen it um there are videos out there lots of behind the scenes of the practical effects they had in production of that mm. film and they're incredible they're yeah, yeah they're fantastic and you just don't get that enough these days no um so go check that out if you can but yeah the the prequel uh i guess you can take it or leave it but if you're gonna watch the thing the original the thing 
just leave it. Just, just yeah, stick I think with you can, the thing. You can, def- you can skip it. Definitely, it's not. It's not necessary. If you're a bit of a completionist, then sure, watch it. But it's not really adding anything. And as it argue, like I say, arguably, it takes away because it it, it answers a big unknown in the movie. Which is the but, point. It's like we don't need a is, sequel to the thing. Because yeah. it's kind of... I mean, it should be impossible to do a sequel to the thing. Mm-hmm. Someone will find a way soon. Oh, I'm sure they will. But they it will, should I mean, be well, impossible. So John Carpenter wanted to. He, yeah. he had he had a, a plan. He made the one. right decision just to stay making... Yeah. Getting high, getting paychecks, playing video games and making synthwave music. Just, just sit down, old man, and do that. Okay? You've had your time. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this shouldn't, this shouldn't be, this shouldn't be a sequel. All right. Can we, can we take off the prequel now? We're done. Right. Yes. You picked this film for the podcast. I did. Um, Mm -hmm. I told you before the podcast, I didn't actually watch this film like we'd normally do in prep for this because yeah, yeah. I feel like I've seen it enough and just always read up on interviews in uh, on this film mm-hmm. enough to be able to talk for, uh, I would say, another hour, hour or so, hour and a half. <laughs> I can get about that out of it. Um, That's good. But uh, when did you watch this recently? I, yeah, I watched it last night. Um, I did watch it again because I, I, I'd say it was my pick and one of the reasons I picked it was it's been such a long time since I'd watched it um, Yeah, and I was like oh I kind of want to and I'd, I've seen it a handful of times not mm. a huge amount enough that like watching it last night felt pretty pretty fresh I remember the main the main, obviously the main big scenes that everybody yeah. knows yeah. The, the big famous effect scenes and stuff but yeah there was a lot of subtlety that I'd like just completely forgotten about um so i was like yeah it was it was good to watch it again had a had a minor a minor moment because one of the reasons why i picked it is that i bought um a box set of the original and the prequel it was like a double pack blu-ray um and i'd and i'd sort of been thinking oh yeah i want to watch the thing again oh i need i don't have it in my collection i'll have a look for it oh there's a double pack there on amazon bosh not yep. that fussed about having the prequel, but for the price, it's included. Whatever. I put the I put the thing in last night, and I'm immediately greeted by the the Universal DVD Blu-ray menu, and it was all in Japanese. What? <laughs> I don't, honestly, you have a Japanese copy of the thing. Well, no. <laughs> so the 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 case. All the all the text on the case is in English. Yeah, the film is is in English. It, it defaulted to having Japanese. I'm, I'm saying Japanese. I'm not sure. It was some sort of kanji alphabet. Could be Japanese. It, it could now be we Chinese. say uh, Asia, Asia, of Asian yeah, descent. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um. So. Um, so the the language it wasn't dubbed. The language was in English, in English, but it, it defaulted to having the subtitles. Uh, okay. Up. Yep. So I could turn those off, but all the menu options are in this foreign language that I don't understand. And it was just I just I took a hazard at a guess that play <laughs> was going to be the high, originally highlighted thing, <laughs> and I hit it, and it was. So but I had a brief moment of like, oh crap, I've I've bought a the foreign <laughs> copy of and, the movie and, that I'm not going to be able to watch. That would be awesome to keep, though, collection-wise. I, I mean, yeah, that'd be yeah, great. Yeah. So I look, I've looked, I've looked back on the Amazon. Say it was an Amazon purchase. I've looked back on the Amazon listing, and there's nothing anywhere that says this is, you know, a, a non-English bizarre. copy. Um, but yeah, it was just oh, it was just all the menu options are in. But- I think it's. I'm pretty sure it's Japanese. But if if you get a chance, you're able to send me a picture of that. I'd be really interested to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing I can say. There may be well be extras on there, that I, but I don't know because I can't read what the menu says. So. Oh, is it this? The first result I've got on Amazon: the thing double pack, including the original Blu-ray, 2012, two movie box set. Yeah, probably that one black cover. Yeah, black yeah. cover. Just saying. Yeah, the thing, yeah. 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 Oh, well, eight pound. It's not bad. Yeah. Or the thing on four. The thing 4K Ultra HD 16. That's really good as well. Region 3? Oh, hello. 
All right. Um, I mean, that is it. The fact that it's region free makes me think. But it was like a DVD, uh, yeah. Blu-ray. Are the regions a thing anymore? They are. Still do that? They still are because I don't know if you remember when we did Return of the Living Dead. I've got Return of the Living Dead on 4K, and mm. I got it. It's an American version because the only way I get it is from Scream Factory, Shout Factory. I can never yep. remember what they're called. Um, Scream Factory. Yeah, the the film disc works mm-hmm. on i use my it's not i know it's not the best 4k player folks i don't, can't afford the 4k player i have a ps5 the, the film 4k works on my ps5 but the special mm-hmm. features don't it says it's not supported in this region Weird. it's really bizarre so there are some still some issues with region free um but it i'm really hoping it gets cleared up soon just everything works yeah. everywhere because it's yeah it should, i mean it, it should it should now we're a a global society surely we can do maybe for not much longer (laughs) well (laughs) yeah um we'll do away we can do away with stuff like that but yeah i did have a a brief moment of like oh crap how am i but i think i think just talking about generally where this is available i'm pretty sure it's on amazon prime it might be as a rental the film itself Um, yeah yeah yeah. you know we include that now don't we 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 do we do actually so are you, are you looking exactly where to I am it? looking it up. It is, on, it is on Apple TV. It's on Prime Video. It's on Google Play Movies. And it is on YouTube. They're all rental price uh, behind paywalls. But it's a couple of quid. Two, about two fiddy, three fiddy. If you want to watch. I need about three fiddy. Need about three fiddy <laughs> to watch the thing. I said, I said, damn it, thing monster. <laughs> he came out of the, the, the snow and said, I, I need about three fiddy. <laughs> <laughs> I realised it wasn't an Antarctic researcher at all. <laughs> and folks, if you do not get that reference, you're too young for this podcast. <laughs> um, I just while you're there, I this has been on my things I want um, photo album on my phone for so long. The oh, same yeah. as to you. Um, I don't know how legit it is. I think it's legit. Oh, it's the thing art book. That... Apparently, it's it's incredible. Oh, the history of... Actually, I'm just looking... Sorry, I've immediately just scrolled past that and gone to the customers who viewed this also viewed because there's a lot of, like... And there's there's also an Aliens thing, art book. There's a board there's game. A thing, his, the history, there's a board game. I, that is immediately... The Thing board game would be incredible, I think. I bet it is, actually. I've, I've been told off about my board game purchases just recently, though. I feel like the, the Thing board game is kind of going to be a bit like Cluedo. Oh, guessing yeah, who's who actually yeah it, it, in fact looking at i'm looking at it and it does look very much it looks like Pudo. it looks it was bad. mccready with the flare in the, <laughs> yeah. like, in the comms room like it actually did. i mean i suppose that's and the that's figures as well set up for it and the figures aren't gr- oh, the best to be fair but they're not they're not no. great but, but you, there's a new collection there yeah. horror board games there's a halloween horror one i know games. we, we are digressing one. a bit here we are I've got um, that alien one. Oh, have you? How's that? Yeah, I've not played it yet, but it looks very good. Problem is with board games, you need friends to play it with. I know, this that's my issue. But as the missus points out, it's like they're becoming like the new books, keep buying them, and we're not doing anything <laughs> with them. But then every time I suggest let's play a board game, she didn't want to. So what one, more, I, what's one, poor boy to do? One quick tangent rant about this. This is the problem <laughs> that we've got with like video games nowadays. You mm. in our days sitting in the same room playing video games with your friends was the shit and now people don't do that it's all online no. so how the fuck are you meant to play board games yeah you have to I mean, properly organize are, a night for that i mean there are board games online simulator things on. it's not the same it's not the same <laughs> it's not the same not um the same. anyway um anyway anyway back 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 back, back. here we go um yes. you just watched the film so i i haven't watched the film for a while i last time i saw it mm-hmm. maybe a couple months ago it was on a, a film channel on tv and i was just scrolling by but the last time i properly saw it i think was maybe two years ago uh where it got re-released in the cinema so i've seen it on the big mm. screen and it's oh, one nice. of those films it's like it came out before i was born never got to see it on mm. the big screen and i've now be, i've now been able to see it on the cinema like i've been i've, I've seen um texas chainsaw massacre in 70 mil on the big screen that was great to tick off seeing halloween on the big screen um so that was the last time i saw it but it's still quite fresh in my memory um yeah i believe this is carpenter's best film i am obviously i love 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 halloween 
but I believe it's his best film, his best movie. I, best producer. Uh, I mean, it's no Ghost of Mars. I've got, well, it's no Escape from LA. It's not Escape from LA. <laughs> okay, now this is quite tough. Now you're making this quite tough, actually. Yeah, you're right. Mm, mm. It's not They Live. It's not Big Trouble in Little China. They Live is very good. No, but, mm. Yeah, but I... I mm. No, I'm. It's no escape from New York either. Now, this is what this, this is a good segue as well because you, you gotta look at Carpenter's filmography in in, in order. Like it's in set. It's hard to find another director that has had banger after banger after banger, yeah. no matter how well I mean, they've succeeded or done in the box office. I in the mouth of madness as well. I forgot that was his. Like, have um, you seen Dark Star? His first film, very low budget, um, no, independent I film. But I mean, that was his first one. If you start from Assault from Precinct on Precinct Thirteen, Precinct Thirteen, great. Halloween, The Fog, Escape from New York, The Thing, Christine, Starman. Starman is okay. Mm. Big Trouble in Little China, Trouble Prince Little of China. Darkness. They Live, Memoirs of an Invisible Man. That is good. I do like that. Um, I believe that's Sam Neill. Um, in the Mouth of Madness, Village of the Damned, and we'll leave it there. Uh, <laughs> that's I, where we'll I, stop. I, I like Ghosts of Mars just for how rubbish it is. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I rubbish. Soft spot. I have a soft spot for just how, how terrible it, it is. And and also it ticks my, my peeve about archaeologists doing stuff on Mars, which always ends badly. <laughs> always. And it's got Ice Cube in it. <laughs> and it's got Ice Cube in it. It's Oh, I'm going to watch Ghosts of Mars this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you. It's his best film. It's either this or Halloween, I think. I mean, there are he's got other films that I do like yeah. a lot. But if we're talking about his best, then yeah, it's it's the thing or it's Halloween. I think, or maybe the fog. I think, but that's that's. There probably... we go. Or that. Or that. But that just. Yeah. How many other directors have had one no, after the many. other? Like, I mean, Spielberg is one of the greatest directors of all time. Okay, we'll use an example. And he's made movie after movie after movie after movie. But there's probably, I think, um, a uh, general consensus could be maybe, let's say, movie A is is incredible. But movie B, nah, not so much. But then movie C was incredible. Movie D was great. And then movie E, John Carpenter is amazing, amazing, brilliant, 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 brilliant. It's yeah, very but consistent. It, it kind of depends what you're into, though, I think. I mean, like, yeah, E.T.'s... Like good, and it's a, a classic. Good shout on but, ET because we'll come back to but, that. But I'm I'm gonna watch Big Trouble in Little China yeah. way more than I'm gonna watch ET. <laughs> Big Trouble in Little Chinatown. It's actually Little China. I always call it Little Chinatown. It's Little um, China. Yeah. Has so much going on that would be so hard to review. <laughs> there is just there is too much going on in that film. It's so good. Um, it's so good. Speaking of E.T., this film flopped because of E.T. Oh, for real? Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Because they came out at the same time. And which Alien movie do you reckon is going to do better with an audience? I mean, it's the family Friend- movie, isn't it? Family-friendly E.T. Mm-hmm. or dog head that turns into a <laughs> flower. out dog head. Yeah. A flower that the flower petals are actually the dog's tongue with the dog's teeth on. And start squirting something at another dog. I think ET is probably going to do a little bit better it's than niche, that. It's a niche market than dog squirt face terror. Yeah, yeah. This, that was this... an alternative title. <laughs> <laughs> this this film did not do well at all. Um, this film flopped and got really negative reviews. I think that's I think that's the crux of John Carpenter films, though, isn't it? Is is the king of the cult classic? Yeah. Yeah, completely, completely. Because it has become a cult classic. Oh, yeah, because that, because I mean, all the, we've, we've we've talked about how great all these films are, but they're all cult <laughs> not at the time, great. not at the time. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. mean, they live. <laughs> it's got a twenty-minute wrestling scene in a back alley, <laughs> and it's incredible. And most of the script ended up being rehashed for the Duke Nukem games. <laughs> you know, they they live is. It's still kind of relevant to these days. It's brilliant. It's still relevant. Oh yeah, the context is still there these days. You know, obey, just obey, <laughs> just consume product and don't ask questions. That's it. Um, 
I mean, where, where, where do we? I didn't want to, like I said, we didn't want to, I didn't want to go shot for shot through this film. No. Um, I, I have taken a lot of notes, obviously, on the effects. We talked about Rob Button. The effects are, are one of the main crux of this film. One of the yeah. main crux of this film. Like, oh, and there's, a, there's some great, like, body horror. Oh, yeah. Just, just disgusting. Gross. Still to this stuff. day, gross. Absolutely oh yeah, gross. definitely, and and not like one one scene that I guess I suppose I was reminded of rather than sort of sticks out, but it, it just as we're talking about it now, um, I'm trying to just trying to remember the character's name. It's the guy they set fire to out in the snow. Is he Palmer? Bob, Bob? Because I've got a note about Palmer. Is it Palmer? Oh, it's Palmer. Um. Oh wait, do you mean because he no he ends up in the snow. Or do you mean yeah, the guy... Goes, uh, Bennings. Oh, Bennings. Uh, earlier on in the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, he goes running off. Well, they, yeah, he's, he's <laughs> sort of... The guy sees him being all assimilated and absorbed yeah. and runs off, and then when he comes back, he's disappeared. And then, yeah, and he's crouched there with, like, the salad fingers, and he's, like, <laughs> screaming. Yeah. Um, just that. It's a small, subtle, like, thing, like, uh, the word th- thing is going to come up a lot in this part, isn't it? Um, the thing about the thing in this instance with the thing is, yeah, he's just got it's it just like we you know you know about the mouth twisting, heads coming off and turning into spiders and all these sort of big like things, but he's just like he looks perfectly normal apart yeah. from having these like gross, elongated alien fingers because he's not quite done changing and then he's. And at that point, he's, like, really not human when he starts, like, shrieking. Like, he doesn't have the language capacity yet either, or it's just, yeah. We, we we don't know, and we should never know, what the thing is. It It's no. a being or uh, bacteria, whatever it is, that just yeah. can... A parasite. Let's go with a parasite. That parasite. Can, take over a living form but which we also learn from the prequel annoyingly it can't transform or accept foreign objects such as Mm. like metal um which is one of the theories in the end with keith david you know he's not the thing because he's got his earring in but whatever um whatever i don't we'll we'll talk about that we don't need to know at the end so it's it's some sort of parasite so with bennings which you were talking about it's it's like Either his body's rejecting him, or he's the parasite hasn't fully evolved and done whatever it wants to do with his body. They call it at the right time, but we don't know. We don't know. The, the, it's been here for so long, and it, it got uh, the, the Norwegians discovered it. Unfortunately, yeah. um, do you want to, do you want to give a brief description of the film? Because we are going really into it, and there might. I mean, why would you come here if you don't know the film? I mean, if you yeah, if you've not seen it, go watch like, it. Just, go watch go, it. Leave, leave now. Go watch it. <laughs> leave now. But, <laughs> yeah uh, uh, it's set in antarctica uh an american research station wow yeah okay there's a little snowy in that interesting um no penguins or is that the other way around i was forgetting. no you're right which. penguins at antarctica um and yeah uh <laughs> this was supposed to i've gone completely blank this was supposed to be a quick synopsis um, yeah, they're, all yeah they're, they're, they're basically they're peaceful days interrupted by some crazy Norwegians in a helicopter chasing a dog. Yep. <laughs> um, it all goes a bit wrong, and said helicopter explodes, and they adopt a dog, which turns out not to be a dog, but some sort of shape shifting alien creature. And, and madness ensues and throughout their madness, camp. Madness, yeah, distrust, ensues, paranoia, and everybody nearly almost ends up dead apart from two people finn hey spoiler <laughs> spoilers in the house <laughs> yes for that yeah 40 year um, old film yeah 42 so that's the thing um thanks for listening folks we've described the film now <laughs> <We're getting laughs> <off. laughs> very good go watch it bye um okay uh, uh Let's go back to effects because the effect, like I said, the effects yeah. is such a big part of this film. Twenty-one-year-old mm-hmm. Rob Bottom, um, he had worked with Carpenter in the past, but he apparently took on this job. He ran this job, and I've worked in film. I know how I have friends that run 
like mold shops and prop shops in different films and i know how difficult it is this guy's 21 at 21 i was just getting into the industry working on a film like this the amount of effects he had i i understand how he became ill from this apparently he like he suffered from pneumonia just from the workload and that's when stan winston came on so you know um when the dog is transforming yeah before it reaches up to the ceiling and pulls itself away just mm-hmm. before that once it's done all its other business you see it it's kind of like a long dog head and it's sort of moving back and forth on the floor mm. that is stan winston's arm in there underneath right. controlling it because at that point mr Botton was pretty much dying from this film because there are mm. so many effects but they're all incredible they're all super they still live up to this day it's like how jurassic park the t-rex reveal yeah it's it's still hard to find things that look better than that mm-hmm. um it's practical effects isn't it it's real it's effects practical effects yeah yes it's not real real obviously because you can't make it, this thing doesn't exist <laughs> but it looks more it's real yeah it could be real you need to what, what's the phrase um this uh sense of disbelief i always get this phrase wrong um oh um yeah suspend your disbelief. suspend you suspend your disbelief you just zone out of the world and like you're there with them that's that there's this monster that's terrifying um it, it's like the, the gore though is so far over the top it's not like at brain dead levels you know no. where brain dead is just or dead alive whatever you want to call it it's just you may as well just be watching blood blood yeah 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 blood 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 <laughs> this is so far over the top it's at the point of there's no visible shapes or recognizable life forms it's it's unimaginable just oh no it's the creativity yeah, it, it's, it's body horror in like yeah in yeah if it can have a if we can stick a, have another tentacle coming out of it or you know another Why not? leg or <laughs> yeah there's there's tentacles coming out there's tongues limbs splitting in half chest cavities opening up and biting arms off heads detaching and tentacly yeah. things all over yeah uh, it just looks gross we have a couple of autopsy scenes though early on where they they sort of they find the remains of a thing in the in the norwegian base and bring it back to to operate on and then they operate on the the dog thing as well and in both of those scenes it's like what am I, what am I looking at? Like you, you, you sort of the dog. The dog escapes, yeah. doesn't it? No, no, no. Part of it does. Oh, right. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Part of it does because that's what comes back at the end. Um, oh yeah, of course. The end, the stop motion animation uh, bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there, there, there's a bit of it that they they kill and is it is it Wilfred Brimley that plays the Doctor? Wilfred Brimley. Um, I've got to talk to you about diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> he. Um, <laughs> He's operating on it, and he says like, "Oh, because oh. uh, that's when he sort of recognizes what 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 its deal is." And he says, "Oh, there's bits of this that that aren't aren't dog. Like that's not a dog bit, but that's a dog bit, and it's obviously changing its it can change its form into into one thing or another." Um, yeah, oh. just go back to what you said earlier about not we don't we never really know what the thing is. Like it, it doesn't have a, a recognizable form that no. we we know of. Um, I, I was kind of referring to it as an infection, like because I, you know, that's kind of the parlance of it. It's like, oh, you don't know if they're infected with the thing, and yeah. like, uh, it could, it could well be just a bacteria, as far as we know. It, it doesn't that deforms the body, mm. and... yeah, multiplies yeah. like a, you know, a cancer in people, and and just yeah, it, it deforms you and uh... yeah, that's a good point because the. In general, the, the the thing, whatever it is, the dog or Norris or uh, Windows or Palmer, <laughs> I've got the list here. Um, it's never aggressive at first. It's always trying to defend itself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe maybe you could make an argument of the dog because. The dog uh, transforms. The other dogs are scared and trying to escape, but then it latches onto those dogs. But the thing never outright comes. Does it never really outright comes out and just attacks? Does it? Not that we see. 
No, it, it's usually when... Well, I suppose does, I when think. it's threatened. I, arguably, the autopsy scene... It, but it's threatened, it, yeah. Uh, not, it's sorry, not the autopsy scene. When, they, when it's, they're, they're resuscitating. That's what they're doing, aren't they? It's the, it's the mm -hmm. paddles, the um, defib thing. Uh, and it opens up its chest and eats. You get that classic scene. <laughs> quick, <laughs> quick, one, one second scene of the amputee. I mean, I guess there it doesn't need to bite his arms off. No, I, I think, yeah, I think if I word that better, it doesn't, it's not aggressive, but it's it, when it's, it feels threatened a lot, maybe. Yeah. It's not like Alien. It's not, you know, it's not no, like it's Alien not where the, the, the Xenomorph is hunting people no, down. No, 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 off. no. No, no, It's not like that at all. It's purely, and and obviously, in, um, Kurt Russell, McCready says, and that's how he devises the, you know, gets the idea for the, the, the hot wire in the blood yeah. test, because he recognises that this thing will reveal itself to to survive to defend itself mm. um yeah it's not it doesn't have a it's not trying to kill everybody for food or anything it's basically no. just trying to go unnoticed and it keeps getting because they're already aware of it i suppose it keeps getting rumbled because they they expect that there's a thing mm. that, that there's an expectance expectation that one of these people is not who they say they are there's an imposter um yeah i just you do wonder why it doesn't just like run off though well there is a point where i noted down it, <laughs> it tries to run off in the blood testing scene mm -hmm. where uh it's revealed palmer is currently the thing um some great great moments in that like that that's that's whole scene alone is so well done and the such a great jump scare because when Kurt, when McCready is testing the blood with the hot wire, you can also see it's a fake hand where the okay. uh, the thing jumps out of the, the blood, the Petri dish. Mm -hmm. But it lingers on it for so long. It lingers on it for so long and you, you kind of know that jump scare's coming. Yeah. And he's holding it there and you, you know it's coming. And he goes, right, I'm going to try you now. Cuts to something else. It cuts back and you expect it to happen. Doesn't happen. Similar, I think we talked about something like this uh, recently in Cobweb. There was a good jump scare where you expected it to happen at this moment. It doesn't happen. And then it happens about two seconds later. Yeah. That's where the jump scares were very well deserved. And this, this jump scare is fantastic. So Palmer gets revealed as the thing. His head opens up. And then I, think, oh, I, can't, remember, big, yeah. I can't remember who he kills. Uh, it might, is, it, is it Windows? I think it's Windows, yeah. They've all got big curly hair. Yeah. I think it's Windows. It's the 70s. He gets blasted by the flamethrower and then runs out the wall that is about an inch thick. Yeah. And that scene, if you watch that scene, the wall just explodes. <laughs> They're in fucking Antarctica. What's the insulation like? There's no insulation. They're, they're just that yeah, single skin sheds. That they're all <laughs> he living just in. runs through this plasterboard and he's he's out there. Um, uh, I believe he then dies out. He just burns i think he just yeah they, they, he's, yeah he's burned. oh he, no mccready throws dynamite at him <laughs> oh, yeah. that's the one that mccready throws a stick of dynamite and blows him up which at the time i thought hang on a minute you know that he's you've already stated out loud that the thing it can replicate and survive with just a small piece of it so is exploding it across the entire like campus of the base a really good idea? <laughs> yeah. For all you know, you've just like created half a dozen little, little surviving things. fragments <laughs> that are just yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um the you mentioned the amputee oh no, the the or the um defibrillator scene. Well it's not an autopsy, it's defib scene, yeah, yeah. The resuscitation scene. And so when Copper, went back to my list there. Copper goes in for the, the defibrillator. <coughs> um, it's Norris's body. Just the stomach just opens up. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it Norris or Copper? Norris. It has the head spot. Yes, it is Norris. I'll, I'll probably get probably uh, whoever. If you're listening to this, please correct me. Okay, like I said at the beginning, um, remembering the names of the characters in this film very yeah. hard at times because a lot of the names are very obscure. Um, he goes in, and the chest opens, and it's it's a little bit goofy. The teeth, because they 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 like 
like little the triangles. Cage. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than gruesome looking teeth. Um, also really wide as well. They're like yeah. planks. But when you they know, a- alien shape shifting, I can let it slide. Yeah, there is no set design. There's no set look. <laughs> um, when it chops off his arms, we get that quick one second look of armless uh, yeah. copper. And you know that that's not him. Yeah, that's an amputee that they hired in for that scene and had a mask of copper put on this just for that one shot. Yeah. That's crazy. That is insane to do that. You're hiring a specific type of actor mm-hmm. and you're doing a head cast or I know it's not makeup. It's it was actual cast of copper's head yeah, yeah. just for that one second. It could have tied his hands behind his back and just added some prosthetic arms onto him. And just go, well, you know, could have done. Yeah. Um, which then leads to obviously Norris's head falling off, and we get in the great spider head spider, yeah. and and um, Palmer, you gotta be kidding me! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a second there where you think like it's not gonna, uh, they're not gonna get it, and the, the spider is gonna be sort of the next threat that that crops up. That's the um, thing that hides uh, away, and yeah, yeah that, that like escapes, but it doesn't. Um, I mean, yeah, talking about that that bit is obviously a huge sort of action-packed hmm. set piece there's a lot going on we have like two thing creatures um you know there's a there's a lot of like action and special effects and uh, blood and and that um but this this was something that like sort of occurred to me. like that sticks in your mind those scenes like stick in your mind hmm. that um this you know they the big set piece bits but what I was it was nice to be reminded of is just how much tension there is like big time in between those bits and how how the the pacing of this film is excellent like the way that those bits are in are spaced out and in between you just get this like like the crushing desperation of people like the the distrust goes from like nothing to 11 like instantly as soon as they find out that one of them could be an imposter it's like they're all turned they're all immediately turned against each other and the tension is like really palpable, and then you get these big like kill scene, action se- sequences that actually relieve the tension instead of like amping it up. It's like, like they're uh... the sort of yeah, it's nice to have that break, and then it, it goes back to um, being really horrible and distrustworthy to each other again for a do bit. Doing the paranoia that they feel. And exude in this film would be a little bit less if they wasn't set in Antarctica. Where, uh, yeah, like, uh, if this shit wasn't going on, their their paranoia is kind of based on we're stuck here. That we, mm-hmm. if this shit doesn't get solved right now, nipped in the bud, we are all dead. If this was, say, a outpost in a forest somewhere, deep in a forest, like way still way away from civilization, yeah. but you could still try and survive. They you might have a chance to escape, but Antarctica, you are on your own. Oh yeah, I mean, what, can you, can get, what can you do? You can get to the coastline and then what? Yeah, like, so I've, ride a penguin. <laughs> so I think I think that yeah. really bumps up their no, justification right, for their paranoia, because yeah. he would be. Um, Not to mention that they've probably all a bit sick of each other anyway after yeah. <laughs> living with, because the, there's some like clash of personality going on amongst the team. Big time, like, big time. I think that more so comes between Gary. He's kind of like the uh, gun, trigger happy. Um, yeah. I don't know really what his position is there, but he's the one with the gun. I mean, that's I was going to say. I don't know what people's positions were anyway. No. Well, N- Niles, uh, not, no, Niles is, gives the impression that he's the cook. Yeah, and McCready's the pilot, but then... And then we've got a doctor, obviously. But apart from yeah. that, it's like we don't know what the research is that they're conducting. No, we don't. Most of them just seem to sit around drinking and getting high and J and B videotapes. Like, I mean, well, they can't play chess anymore. They can't play. No, that chess computer. Nineteen eighty-two. How expensive was that computer? That chess and he, computer. Oh. He just destroyed it because he lost. <laughs> they, they can't play chess anymore. <laughs> it's massive as well. It's huge thing. It's fantastic. The only the only female representation in this film. Adrian Babo is the voice yep. of the chess computer. Yeah. All male cast, and she's the only female representation in this film. Oh, one of the dogs might have been. 
<laughs> but human wise, human slash computer wise. Just one more uh, part about the effects. Do you want to talk about the, the, the final thing? If you if you will, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, it it's it it is probably the weakest looking part of the thing. I think visually, when they're in the basement of the complex, it's uh, McCready, Niles, Child. and Childs, and um, he uh, McCready has the the TNT and the the, the classic yeah. plunger. When it's set up. That the thing appears, and we get a little bit of stop motion, and it, it, that looks a little bit the tentacly bit. Yeah, I mean, just it doesn't look bad, but just compared to the rest mm. of the effects, it's not on the same level. And then when the final thing appears with the dog head, mm-hmm. it's huge. I, I just think it's probably the weakest looking iteration of whatever monster this is. It's a, it's not bad. I just no, I don't think it's the best looking like. Um, it doesn't give me the the gip like the uh, like it doesn't give me the Wilfred Brimley expression of oh, <laughs> oh. Well, maybe maybe because it's not human bits like it's it's the dog yeah. so it's kind of easier to just sort of mentally put it as oh, it's just a monster you know because well, I mean not the like... original dog is still very very gruesome I mean yeah yeah fair enough fair enough the original dog like I said becomes this flower looking thing where the petals yeah. are dog tongues with teeth on them <laughs> yeah kind of looks like the demogorgon from stranger things you don't know stranger uh, things, do you? i it has a big face that goes Bleh. yeah a big flower <laughs> yeah head. yeah it looks does like, i know yeah. that yeah yeah um yeah i just wanted to bring that up because because we were finished off talking about effects um yeah. I think we talked about pretty much all the different type different types of things we see here. I think we do I think we've that's all the different things. I mean I'd just yeah, shout out to the the um the blood test scene with yeah. um windows <clears> being <throat> thrown around like a rag doll cuz that did make me laugh quite a lot. Of, but Oh, when it's, head, a, when it's a mannequin. He's batting his yeah. head and he's just yeah. yeah. When it becomes a mannequin it's great. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, very that's silly. Cool. Um, uh, but yeah, we're talking about the chess computer, and that leads us on nicely to talk a little bit about the thing video game. Do you have it? Um, I don't have it anymore. I don't have it I, either. <laughs> I did. If I owned it twice, actually, because I, I I bought it. Um, I've never played it. Oh right, okay. Um, it wasn't very good. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. no, that's not that's that's slightly unfair. Um, Where was it set? when yeah i know where (laughs) um (laughs) it is set you are basically like a recovery team sent to find out why uh that why contact's been lost yep i believe if i remember Mm -hmm. rightly Apologies if anybody has played the game and I'm getting this wrong. I am going to look at the Wikipedia a little bit. I think, if I remember rightly, I think you play it as yeah, uh, it's a squad because it's squad based third person shooter, survival horror type thing. And yeah, you may uh, you are special forces team sent to the Antarctic outpost uh, to determine what happened to the research team. Mm-hmm. Um, so you yeah, it's it's fairly standard. Third person shoot, you get a bunch of different ga- uh, guns, weapons, you fight lots of iterations of the thing around the station. The, the big hook for it was this like fear trust system where members of your party could become infected and you could test them, test their blood. Uh, oh, that's and if great. You, if you did, the theory was if you did they'd like and, and they turn out to be human they'd lose trust in you that because you accuse them of being and in, of being infected um <laughs> and yeah every every sort of squad mate had the uh potential to be infected after every encounter with like the thing creatures mm. unfortunately it didn't really it just didn't really deliver on what it sort of promised so I distinctly remember like testing squad mates after 
um, encounters and then being fine only to walk into the next room and have them change oh. as like a scripted event. So that I, th- I think that it, I don't think the system was like fully in place or working as much as they wanted it to be. And a lot of the, the squad mate changes were just scripted like squad mate X will change at this point. And I'd literally like cha- like tested somebody outside of a room, walked into the room, and only to hear him like shriek and start erupting. And I was like, "Hang on a minute, We've- <laughs> it's been a second. Like, what happened?" Um, so yeah, it was, but it was it was fun. It was atmospheric. You know, they obviously they had relocated, uh, relocated, reconstructed like locations from the movie. So like. I think there's a bit where you do go to the Norwegian base and they've you, they've got the square ice bunker uh, cut out block bit. Yep. Um there was like a survival mechanic with being outside in the cold. Everything's like blizzardy and low visibility and stuff. It it did a did a good job of capturing the atmosphere, I think. Um it's just that that kind of main selling point with the survival with the the trust thing didn't quite work as as intended um a remake to be honest talking about remakes and things if they try if they tried it now i think they could do a lot better job implementing that system that they envisioned um i think they'd be able to do it now properly well and looking it'd at the, work a lot better looking at the developer i'd never heard of them before computer artworks they'd only made this and one other game called evolver or oh, Evolver rings a bell. Say that right. Evol- Evolver. Evolver. Yeah, it's a Steam, it's a PC game. Uh, <clears throat> multiplayer game. Um, uh, Evolver is a third-person Oh, third yeah, person I did game. have this briefly. Yeah, third-person action game. Um, But that's all they've made, uh, it seems. So, mm. yeah, very, very for British, uh, British developer, I guess, yeah. very small. Um, it the, the thing I I I've seen the gameplay before. It it always reminded me of my one of my first PS2 games called uh, Extermination, which was kind of like a Resident Evil ripoff. Okay. Um, but it was set in like a snowy base <clears throat> where you're trying to you're discovering that these these monsters around in this snowy base and you have yeah. no idea what's going on. It just reminded me of that. But um, yeah, no, I mean, it, uh, it's a, it's a movie game was, I always wanted to try. It was reasonably it was reasonably well received. I think. Yeah. Um just looking now and it's got it's got seven point eight out of ten on IMDB. Um Amazon rating for it is quite high. Uh seventy eight percent on Metacritic. Uh yeah, you know, it was it was okay. Uh, it was very much of its time third person shooter. Like the, it didn't Oh yeah. It, it didn't do anything groundbreaking in terms of gameplay. Um and like I said, the, the the one element it did try and create, I, I think, was a little bit. Uh, I don't I don't think there was as much randomness or agency in that as they led people to believe yeah. from playing it. And like I said, I think a lot of it was like a fault, like a, the illusion of trust having an effect because i think the idea was like if their trust meter went like too low they could turn on you and shoot you or they'd go mad and kill and kill themselves i don't remember there being like much of that so there was they, they it was sold as like you'd have you'd have to work really hard to like manage your squad mates emotions and fear levels and things and i, I don't think it really worked as it was as deep as they described it in the in the end um I think by the sounds of it i really like the way it sounds that they, they put a lot of thought into um, the in-game mechanics, trying mm-hmm. to keep it similar to the film with the the paranoia aspect. Oh, yeah. I mean, like I said, it, it, at face value, it could have just been a shooter with yeah. in setting the universe. But yeah. they they didn't. They tried. They they did try, I believe, to to make something that captured more, like I <sighs> say, the, the mood and this mood, uh, this tone of paranoia and distrust and mm. and such it just yeah it didn't didn't quite work as well as they advertised it i i think is fair to say but you know if you like if you apply i mean it's what it's ps original yeah. xbox ps2 ps2 fact, I've, I've just bought it <laughs> oh, <right. Okay. laughs> because on cex it's eight pound on ps2 and three pound on the original xbox 
I mean, you know, you want to if you want if it's worth a crack if you want to have a go at it. And if you're English, get it from CEX because yeah. it's three pound on Xbox, but on eBay, people are, it's going for between eight and ten pound on eBay. So the only way is up. The only way is Essex. Hey, <laughs> um, I you got that reference because that yeah. aged me considerably. Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because I, I was hoping to bring up the game at some point. Mm. I say I haven't played it, but it, I feel like it needed bringing up. It's it's part of the. We talked about the prequel. We we haven't <laughs> talked about the original, but um, no, we've I've never both, seen the original. I've never seen the original. I I know it's it's a bit different. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, no, John Carpenter's version is different to the original. Yeah. I mean, this film is based on actually a short story. Yes. Um, by John W. Campbell from 1938. I believe so. Who Goes There. It's about an Antarctic research camp that discovers and forwards ancient, crashed alien, um, a madness of Seuss. So, and man, um, yeah. a madness, and madness oh, I always use that. That's the way to describe it. <laughs> madness of Seuss. It's, it's also... <laughs> This this John Carpenter's film follows along the line. I think it, it fits in with the three. I call it the three thers of some of the best remakes: the Thing, the Fly, the Blob. Okay. Three of the best horror remakes that people don't people don't re- a lot of people don't realize they're remakes. And I don't mean that to come across of like um, I know about it. You Actually. don't. Actually, I think you'll find. I think more people maybe know about the Thing and maybe the Blob being remakes, but maybe not the Fly. But all these all these films are from those classic old sci-fi slash horror movies from the 50s and 60s. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, remake those films. Don't remake mm. good films. Remake those into really good horror films because they clearly work. It clearly works in that sense. Yes. Yeah. And, and, you know, it helps to bring these things to an audience. As we've talked about with other things, like, you know, the and I'm just in... To some, to some extent, I'm the same way. It's like, oh, you write things off because they're black and white and old. <laughs> it's like, Ugh. yeah, yeah. Well, this film you know. was originally pitched to be filmed in black and white, and then Universal turned it down. Really? Yeah, yeah. This was going to be filmed in black and white. Apparently, I don't um, know if that. Had I don't think it would have worked. Work or add anything to it in particular. I mean, it's it's not it's not a wildly colourful film anyway. It's all kind of blues and. Grays oh, and that's good. That's a good little segue as well, um, because we have Dean uh, Dean Cundy who worked with Carpenter on Halloween. He was head of lighting. The lighting in this film is superb. Like, yeah, it's set in Antarctica. It's very. There's, there's not much going on lighting wise, but no. the way it's lit, there's a lot of harsh colors here and there, and very really cool like like lens flare effects. You could learn something from this, uh, J.J. Abrams. Don't use lens flares all the time. For instance, when they they, <clears throat> they go down to... Uh, where, where They put Wilfred Brimley, uh, Blair. Oh, they think Blair's please. the thing. They put him in his little cabin. And there's a great shot where they look in and he's got this noose hanging. Like, he's ready to end it. <laughs> but he is, he's dug down, right? He's yeah. discovered... He, he's, the, the, he's just trying to build an airship. And down there, the lighting because of the flare, it's it's so pink. It's kind of like your back, your your wall there. <laughs> it's kind of so <laughs> vibrant, and pink and red. Or um, as you mentioned earlier, Benin's when they catch up with him, pitch mm. black darkness. But when the fire and the flare, like, they've got the flares yeah. out. It, the light is so bright and visible. Yeah, that's it. I mean, the the light, the main <laughs> lighting comes from you know, sort of comes from fire. Yeah. almost exclusively it's big it's flares it's you know actual flames flamethrowers torches um yeah so it is it's very not dark but cold looking blues grays and then yeah these sudden bursts of yeah like heat which you know is the 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 survival thing fire is a it, they need to keep warm because they're mm. in the antarctic fire is the only thing that seemingly kills the thing um so yeah these big bursts of of like heat and flame are are the the life force of people essentially there's also a really good strong emphasis on like heavy heavy lighting and heavy shadows whenever the monsters are around more specifically mm. the dog monster in the pen because the lights go out and we only see like their torches on the dogs, like very specific shots of lighting, but then very dark shadows. It really gives the monster, whatever it is, a bit more of a horrific 
like yeah i think it's that like, don't show uh don't show too much don't show too much the angle yeah. as well isn't it keep things keep things in shadows you do just get these sort of fleeting glimpses of it of Definitely. it i mean it, I don't, yeah. you don't really yeah uh, there's there's a few shots later on where you get a little bit more clear a clear picture of usually when somebody something so somebody first transforms yeah you get like a shot of it but in that in that earlier half before they really know what they're dealing with you you only see things like sort of in the corner of the frame half focused and yep. like you, you never really get to look directly at anything um yeah it does a it does a good job even though we know like you know early on i mean you from the opening credits you know there's a spacecraft involved we we see yeah we see it we see as it does the the same as predator does with the 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 sh the the ship like coming to to earth obviously we don't know well we find out later on that that was thousands of years in the in the past we don't know i i wish happened. that i i kind of wish that scene wasn't in the film the ship coming it doesn't need to be there yeah i agree in but fact i totally forgotten that it was. Well, it's so quick at the beginning yeah because then you're instantly right oh okay this is what we're this is what you have no if you go into this blind okay here we go this is what we're looking this is what we're going with <laughs> whereas if you just start with the dog chase you are you're asking you're, you're left asking many many questions unless you speak norwegian we've got oh, to talk yes. about this yes <laughs> yes of course because we got the we norwegians to right at the this. beginning yes if you speak Norwegian, you are told explicitly. Explicitly. At the beginning of the film, stay away from that dog. <laughs> it's not a dog. It's a thing. We're trying to kill it. It killed everybody in our team. <laughs> there is absolutely zero mystery. Um, if if you are if you happen to speak Norwegian, which is, I mean, slightly unfair if you speak Norwegian, I guess. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah, oh, did, that's the did, film ended. <laughs> did they did they change it in Norway in Norway Norwegian screenings of the? I don't know. Did they I change no the language? Idea. Can we can we can we do that quick bit of research just to see? Um, let's have a look. Uh, I think Norwegian oh, in God. the Norwegian <laughs> release. I just want to find out. Um. Reddit post. Norwegian Redditors. Is the movie The Thing dubbed in your country? I was watching The Thing by Carpenter. I have to ask, is the movie dubbed in your language? And if it is, what language do the Norwegian explorers at the beginning speak? Usually when a movie is dubbed with a foreign language, the conversation inside it, the conversation is dubbed to another language. So the movie is now Norwegian, but the conversation changes to Russian or something. The foreign movies that are not for kids are generally not dubbed in Norway. The Norwegian explorer at the beginning is speaking heavily broken Norwegian and is saying uh, this sentence in Norwegian I can't read and I'm not going to try to, um, which translates to something like get the hell away from the thing. That's not a dog. It's some sort of fit. I think it's imitating a dog. Yeah. It isn't real. It doesn't really give away any of the plot, but more than the synopsis of the on, synopsis on the Blu-ray cover. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's true. You look at the, okay. you just yeah. turn the Blu-ray over. You've got, the story there you, and there yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And i and suppose then, i suppose even going to the cinema you know roughly what a film's about before yeah yeah depends how Original. how blind you want to go into a film called the thing yeah. um because that's quite broad if you go in not knowing what the hell you're going to watch <laughs> <thing> called the <laughs> thing, it could be anything i mean generally even yeah like say you, you go in into a film blind you still know roughly what you're going to see because presumably there has been some influence to see to make you want to go and see a film i mean i haven't seen late night with the devil yet but i roughly know what the, the, the yeah. premise is uh someone also has commented here edit i did a quick search and i think they speak czech during that part in a dubbed version. Oh, okay so so maybe maybe some um different versions do change it just to i just i just wondered secret. I, I just wondered because it's you know for, from an english speaking point of view uh, seeing that movie that's obviously like a little Easter egg, yeah. That like, oh, actually, if you if you know what the what they're saying at the beginning, they tell you that. Yeah, I think I think that is the rough translation. Is get the hell away. That's not a dog. It's some sort of thing. It's imitating a dog. It isn't real. Get away. Yeah. Um. Or words to that effect. So yeah, it's a it's a fun it's a fun little Easter egg that it does it that is basically it's a warning. 
Mm. But I mean, there are yeah, there are all sorts of horror films that where one character will warn another in the early part of the plot, and they're generally ignored anyway. So always. <laughs> Always. Could have could have said, and they'd have been like, "Oh, that guy's off," because obviously they take Crazy the rational. <laughs> they, well, but obviously, yeah, they take the rational um, path and and say, "Well, he must have gone stir crazy." And so, even if even if he was, it was another English research base, and he was speaking English, and, and he would have, and he was saying that's some sort of thing. It's not a dog. Would you believe you've it? Got, you've got this guy's. Nuts. Crazy. Yeah. He's a nut. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's obviously he's staring into the staring into the bleak the blast the, the white featureless landscapes got to him. Someone's he, uh, been on the wacky backy. <laughs> yeah. I mean there's plenty of that about as well, as like I say. Yeah, there is actually. Yeah. They all seem to just be getting <laughs> there is. drunk and high all the time. Antarctic research looks like a lot of fun. Well I've not got a, <laughs> I've not got a chess computer to play with anymore, so <laughs> Well, they had videos of Game shows. And put a pool table. Pool table, cards. Yeah. I mean, if you've got like seemingly limitless supplies of whiskey and like, uh, you know, weed or whatever, cigarettes or whatever else you want, like, it doesn't matter. Just blaze up a fatty and watch Wheel of Fortune reruns. <laughs> yeah. Occasionally look at a monitor. I mean, like I say, we never find out what research they were doing. So. No, we don't. But we got we've got Blair uh, Wolf of Brimley Diary. It seems to when he's he, there's, a, there's a few scenes where he's sort of investigating what's going on and he's using the computer to to deal with it. He's kind of going down the rabbit hole of of like bacteria. Show, look at investigating bacteria spreading and it could do this, it could do then, and it could wipe oh, out. Oh, he does. He does some quick maths. Yeah, and, and then uh, he loses his fucking mind. I love that. I mean, I I love everything about that. I love the really crap computer graphics. Yeah, oh, it's brilliant. That that show the it's like a uh, like the cell, yeah, the yeah, cell assimilating everything. And yeah, he does some quick maths and works out that it's it'd like take over the world in like it's it's very quick. It's a, a very few quick. thousand hours, isn't it? I can't remember yeah, exactly yeah. what the number is. Um, and then yeah, he immediately goes nuts, smashes up the scene. radio, smashes and smashes everything, starts threatening to kill people. <laughs> that scene is superb because when he's got his gun out, he's kind of like um, stabbing motion with the gun. I'll kill you, <laughs> and he, he sort of whips the gun forward when he's randomly shooting. And when they they try to capture Blair, um, I think McCready goes in with a table. And Blair's got an axe because he's. Oh, he's got yeah, yeah. He nearly gets Kurt Russell in the, in the oh, head. He does. He whips the axe, um, and when they dogpile on Blair, and McCready gets mm-hmm. a few good shots in. It's it's great. It's a great little scene, uh, which then leads to him being um, put in the the outside uh, the outhouse. Of his, put in uh, time out. His, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Put in time out because he uh, lost his apps, his mind. I mean, could that that could be a, maybe a potential sequel if. It still wouldn't be as good of an ending. It would ruin the ending if you had a sequel bait. Um, say researched, say a research uh, research team or security team noticed uh, communications are gone at the base. Mm-hmm. They sent the team out to see what's going on. Holy shit, what's happened? Oh my god, we got two survivors, McCready and Childs. Mm-hmm. They get on. We go back to South. Let's just say because it's film, they end up in New York. Everyone ends up in New York or yeah. LA. And then Childs, just they were at the the secret base in New York, and Childs grabs someone, and tentacles start coming out and spreading. And then it spreads there, and then you just you keep going and going and going, and then the end of the film is New York is run run over by yeah the things. You could do that, but still wouldn't be as good as the ending in this film. No, where you just don't know, and that's the beauty of it. That is the beauty of it, and. Well, let's talk about it. Yeah, I've got a few I more things this... we'll talk about, but let's just get into the ending now. Fuck it. Do you we'll come... No, we can we can come back. We can save it for later. We can save it for later. We'll okay, do we'll the just... ending at the end if you want. I'll call us old fashioned, but all right, we'll do the ending at the end. <laughs> Go on. Then. Um, what else? What else? There's we well, a few more things we want to talk about. The um, the the sound design is hmm. classic Carpenter, even though it's um, oh god, and, and I can never pronounce his name. 
Uh, ba, 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 ba. I had it noted down. Um, sound Marconi, 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 Marconi. Oh, Maricone. Uh, yeah. Any, any old Maricone. I can never pronounce his name, and I feel bad for that. Yes. Uh, so he worked with Carpenter on this, and it's it's just as good as Halloween with subtle, simple beats, and it's da 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 da. It, it's just like two beats and it's so simple whereas you look at the prequel the prequel it is outlandish loud it's like christopher nolan and michael bay had a had a, had a joint help in this film it's too much it's too much the the subtleness sound design works with the paranoia yeah um and you also with this film you get the the great aspect ratio which you don't get in many other films I know John Carpenter likes to work in this ratio. It's uh, 2 by 39, which means your letterboxing is, is very thick, you know, thick black lines at the top and bottom. Yeah. And I think that adds to the more dramatic values of the film. If this was full 16 by 9 normal, what we know as nowadays for like HDTV, it, it wouldn't, I don't know. It's just something about it. It's, it's amazing how an aspect ratio can really help affect well, attention. Well, it helps. It, it's it's smaller and more compact. I think it yeah. just helps with the the feelings of claustrophobia and and yes. being trapped. I think it's as simple as that. Um, yeah, that's not something I'd really considered before. But I think if I if I have to if I have to give a reason for it, and I do, yeah, and you, and <laughs> you do, he does, he does. I do. Then that's what I go for. I think yeah, it's it it just assists with that. It assists with that sense of feeling trapped. Did you know we nearly got Tom Atkins as McCready? No. Tom Atkins was uh, considered for the role. Um, I think it was a... I didn't <clears throat> read up on it fully. I just... I, I read up on... I didn't do my homework fully. Uh, but I did know. I did read up that Tom Atkins was potentially considered because he had obviously worked with Carpenter in the past, much like Kurt Russell had. I don't think he would have fit the role. Uh, it's one of them, isn't it? I mean, I think he at that point he was too big to fit one of the minor roles, but also yeah. his character, him, Tom Atkins as himself, I don't think would have fit McCready or Childs, let's say. No, no, but I, I, it's like Tom Selleck being Indiana Jones. It's, <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? It's easy to say, oh, that wouldn't have worked, but. That's yeah. because that's yeah. not what we got, and I, I always—I'm not saying you're wrong, I, 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 or I disagree necessarily. I just—I always find it really difficult to imagine. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, and picture it because, well, I actually especially had with something this you know this, this old, we've had forty years, forty-two years of it being Kurt Russell. I think it's more so, so I, because I see Tom Atkins; he look, always looks like an old man with his big moustache. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. look like he'd fit the McCready role with like the, the cowboy you know um i had the no. kind of opposite reaction last night i i, I finally watched uh the first dune film last night okay we mean to get into dune and the, not the the original no not or... not the david lynch one um right. the dennis villeneuve part one the, the, yeah which is superb i absolutely loved it um but oscar isaac plays timothy chalamet's father and I could not buy him being his father. I just, there was something about it didn't work. So it's kind of the opposite effect of, I would rather see someone else play. Like Josh Brolin is like uh, Oscar Isaac's right-hand man in June. Mm. And I was I was thinking Josh Brolin would just, gives off that powerful father figure there to Timothy Chalamet that Oscar Isaac doesn't give me. So it's kind of the yeah. opposite reaction there. Whereas I can't see this player playing this character. But I can see Kurt Russell playing this character rather than someone else. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. But like, like you said, like we've we've known this for forty years. It's how are you able, how are, you're not going to know it as anyone else. Um, so, yeah, I, yeah, I always just struggle struggle with that. Looking, at, I mean, like I say, I've seen the <laughs> using the Tom Selleck example before. I've seen the screen <laughs> test of Tom Selleck, and it's just like this just feels wrong. But it's yeah. it's because I, I do put it largely down to the fact that that's not what we got and therefore not what i know and i i do struggle to mentally make the switch without it just being odd mate it's the mustaches 
Tom Atkins, Tom Selleck. <laughs> it's the big, <laughs> it's the big Magnum PI moustaches. <laughs> I mean, it could be. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it's maybe. going to hinder them getting roles. I'm telling you, <laughs> you need the big beard, the big bushy beard like Kurt Russell got there. Yeah. Um, now, I guess I had one or two more notes, but this I, when I was doing lots of research and homework for this film, there is so so much to talk about with this film. But we could be here forever. I think we've we've hit some of the big main points. Um, the ending, if you want to move on to the ending. I think we ought to talk about mm. the ending. Mm. Um, the ending. I get, I mean, obviously we we ought to talk about the ending. Like we weren't At some going, point. Like, that's it, we're just not going to talk about the ending. Um, I, for, first and foremost, I just wanted to ask the question as to what you think. So just before you give me an answer for that, is if you don't know, the ending to the thing is one of those scenes that people like to debate. Yep. There's... Strongly. Strongly. Yeah, strongly. There is deliberate and strong ambiguity as to... So, yeah. The the final... The survivors are McCready and Childs. They're the only yes. two left. They've become separated throughout the course of the, the sort of final scenes of the film. They come back together at the end. And we don't know whether one, neither, or both of them is infected, is the thing. Whether they're both still human, neither of them are human, or one or the other is still human. But his breath, Aiden, you can see his breath. And there are a <laughs> lot of things that people like. His eyes, the shiny, there's, there's a lot of things that people like to discuss um, and use as potentially potential evidence that sways it one way or another so yeah first of all i was just going to say do you have an iron uh, an iron in the fire in regards to this that's not really the right phrase but we're you, coining uh, it now the iron in the fire have, i mean it is a phrase i'm just not using it in exactly the right way do you know do you have um an opinion on this do you do no. you lean one way or another no and i don't want to because See, that's exactly my take I don't want to because we've gone through this whole film of not knowing what the thing is, not knowing who the thing is at times. Yeah. Why it's, it's, it, I don't need an origin story. I don't need to know where this thing is, what it no. is. Let's end it like that. Yeah. I don't need a happy ending. This hasn't been a happy film. <laughs> no, 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 no. So that's it. So the, the setup as well is that they, they've basically sacrificed everything to make sure that the thing doesn't escape. Yeah. So they, they've burned the, they've burned the research station to the ground and they so they come together to essentially wait to die they they're going to freeze to death yeah and but they're sort of safe in the knowledge that they've they've managed to contain the the spread of the infection and yeah it's a bleak ending we we we've got two men that are going to die and they say all this debate rises that you know after the the credits roll McCready then kills Charles because he knew that he was a thing or vice versa or or they're actually both things um and yeah i'm happy not knowing like it doesn't matter it it ends and yeah that's gen and that's generally my opinion with all of these sorts of things whether it's Agreed. deckard being a simulant oh yeah yeah is it simulant replicant Repl replicant isn't it in Blade Runner, or you know, did Tony Soprano die at the end of The Sopranos? Yeah. I don't care. I, I never. I'm not bothered unless there's a def, unless there's a director's cut or a deleted scene that comes out that says like, actually, yeah, this is the story. Then fair enough, I'll accept whatever it is. If something's left ambiguous, I'm quite happy to just have that be. Yeah. It. I don't. Yeah. I don't need to speculate. I'm not bothered about speculating. I'm quite happy to just go. Okay then we don't know because and what do you it. what do you gain from it thinking or for for instance all the options neither of them are the thing okay they're both human mm -hmm. what do you gain from it they're both gonna die mm -hmm. okay or maybe a security team does come out that's slim chance they'll probably die still they'll freeze yeah. to death they're in a harsh winter i mean now. that it gives you a modicum of hope, I suppose, that um, they they managed to, maybe, or yeah. or if not hope, then 
satisfaction yeah. that they that the humans triumphed over the evil alien and they survived albeit not for very much longer but mm. it, it gives you that the other options one of them is the thing then they then one then they're fucked i mean yeah the, if one of them if, if mccready is the thing charles will die that means mccready as the thing will then probably freeze for another however long and just be it'll just continue there, there's no and, and neither of those what i've just described um neither of them being a thing or one of them being a thing neither of them are good endings neither of no. them are really satisfying in a way no. granted it's not it's not a happy ending anyway to having like a nice satisfying ending there they've oh, they've survived they've overcome evil but it's interesting it's more interesting leaving it ambiguous like this yeah <laughs> way more yeah i think so like you say it doesn't it doesn't add anything it doesn't no. add anything having any any sort of resolution um especially you know like you, we don't we didn't we didn't get a sequel i don't want a sequel but if yeah. we if we work on the assumption that one of them is and they're frozen then like yeah like you said they're they're presumably going to be found when the rescue team yeah comes and you'd assume that they'd repatriate any remains that they found so then yeah the thing's got a one-way ticket to you know wherever new yep. york america somewhere where it can just latch on to something else but so what we're not going to see it we no. we're, not, we're not getting we're not getting that sequel we're not getting that storyline so it doesn't it doesn't matter and like oh yeah it'd be really bad but yeah, it'd be, it'd be really bad to freeze to death in the snow as well. So I think it's... I think John Carpenter's even said there there is no answer. It doesn't matter. That's that's the point of it. Mm. It's meant to be left ambiguous like that. Yeah, he was right to do so. Um, I, th I think so. I I do. I mean, I suppose that's a, you know gives it gives plenty of ammo for nerds on the internet to argue about what happened. And the flicker in the light of the eyes and breath and <laughs> the breath, yeah, whatever. Which again, they they unfortunately, I mentioned earlier, they they talked, to, they they brought it up in the prequel that mm. the thing can't um can't deal with uh, non organic material like metals and like the piercings or like fillings yeah, so, it fillings. It so when it earrings. yeah like so fillings were lost in uh someone in the prequel so it, it can't transform with that uh so keith david child still has his earring in so it's like oh he can't be the thing then if it's transformed into, into keith david it can't be the thing because he's still got his earring so it must be mccready but who cares but that wasn't established in that no in junk in carpenter's version anyway so it was it could have it could have done it could have been um yeah there was uh, I've read. I mean, I've read conflicting things that they were instructed to play it as human. They were told that neither of you the thing. You know, it's not in the script or whatever. That, and they were, they both played it as that they were human. Yeah. Um, I also heard that there is this, uh, the the lighting director or whoever edited it with this put this light yeah, effect Dean in Cundy, the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. To in in the humans and therefore childs doesn't have it and therefore he's he's the one but that, that is conflict... noted that is noted during the blood scene the uh the blood testing mm. scene yeah yeah but that conflicts directly with them being told to act as human so yeah. it, it's one of them things it's like you know if you if you want to you believe what you want believe what you want but i don't personally think it really adds anything one way or the other and i've always been of the opinion that i'm quite happy to just ride with it yeah. whatever i don't i don't need to know it's it's fine like you say doesn't add anything knowing one way or another yeah completely completely agree um we mentioned a while back that i think we'll, we'll we'll talk in the future about sort of a rehash episode on uh ways to get into horror sort of um because you were never part of the episode so it'd be nice to get your take on that this, this is certainly a film I I couldn't recommend to anyone who was getting into horror because I mean when we did discuss that you had to think about um uh you had to you had to think about people that maybe were getting into horror but 
I'm not a fan of gore or mm. they couldn't take gore or jump scares, but they like other types of horror. They different sub genres of horror. So you had to really think about people that were getting into horror. Now I don't think this is something you could show to someone who was, I'm, I'm really starting to get into horror films, you know. I think I think this is a few steps in. I don't know, to be honest. Because I think there's... I think I think it's got a lot going for it. I don't... Uh, the, the effects are good. I don't think the gore's over the top. No. Uh, um, there's, there's a lot of tension and good human interaction and stuff. I think this is... I'd say this is a decent gateway film, mm -hmm. but but I think when we, we've we've briefly touched on this before, and I think it always depends on what that person particularly is looking for and what they're into. Like if some if they want sci-fi horror, hundred percent, I'm going to say watch Alien, watch Aliens, watch. The thing. Yes. <clears throat> if you're not that fussed about sci-fi, like me, well, maybe check it out a little bit further down the line. But it's not a it's not a run to. Um, but I, I think it's, I mean, to anyone who's into horror and never seen it, I would always go, you, if, oh, if you haven't yeah, seen the yeah, thing, thing, watch the thing. It's incredible. Thing. Yeah, it's just definitely. incredible. I don't think it's too, I don't think it's bad as a gateway film. Cause I don't, I think that, I think the horror is relatively light. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's of... scary. No, such. like I say, there's a lot of tension and things, but it's not necessarily tension. It's not like walking around a, walking around the haunt, a haunted house in the dark tension. Mm -hmm. It, oh, although it, I, I suppose arguably it should be because it is a creature that's could potentially jump out at any time, yeah. but it doesn't feel that way. Um, like like you could if you take out the alien and put in just a, a shortage of food or something and you could still have this tell that you know you could still tell the same sort of tense drama with people being all distrustful and yeah. and what have you um so i think it's got that sort of it, it's like aliens over alien i think it's got a good balance of like action and tension um without being like in your face horror so like i'd say oh maybe like you know dip your toe in the water with aliens and then grow and then progress to watching alien which is far more of a horror film good shout yeah you know what yeah, i mean that's a good and transition I think, yeah so, so i think the thing works in a introductory capacity because i think it's it's got a little bit more of that sort of action leaning than straightforward yeah i mean that's, that's monster a, horror that's a yeah that's a good progress of films go from the thing to the alien to a the alien yeah that's that's pretty good um a fair point fair point yeah um does this rank higher for you uh not hugely but not because of anything the film's done it's it's all personal taste and as mm -hmm. you know i'm not a huge sci-fi fan not enough folk horror in it for you. There's not enough. There's not enough woods. No enough wood. There's no woods. Antlers. <laughs> <laughs> there's no woods. Antlers and weird shit. Yeah, trees yeah. Trees for me, um, because there's no trees. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't dislike it at all. I like it a lot, but it's you know, like I say, it's been a good few years since I last watched it. It's probably going to be a good few years till I, I watch it again. Sure. Um, sure. I'll never. I, you know, I, I don't turn my nose up at it. I think it's great. I think I, I like it a lot. Yeah. But yeah, it's not, it, it's probably not in my top 10. It's one of those that were like, oh shit, yeah, I forgot about the thing. Under, yeah. You know what I mean? Rather than it being like, duh, 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 the thing is, it's not, it's probably not ranking in my top 10, but it's not, it's not far out of it, you know? I, never I think that's fair. I think that's fair. My my top five never really changes, and I don't think yours does either. But every year I do like my top thirty. It's just a nice little thing, and it does it does change. The rest of them do change. Let's say between five and ten changes a lot. Ten and then twenty that group change, but they, they stay in the same sort of group. They just yeah. it's getting them in the right place. And I last time I I had put the thing at number seven. And it wasn't even a case of I had just watched it. I was like, yeah, that's really hype. I want to put that higher. No, I, I still, I'm still happy to have that there. 
number six, yeah. I have Blair Witch Project. Um, eight, Return of the Living Dead. Nine, Scream. And ten, From Dust Till Dawn. Mm-hmm. But um, it's a superb film. It is it absolutely is superb. superb. Yeah. It's incredible. I definitely can't. Um, I can't fault it. And I, w- I don't want to fault it. No. Um, but it's, yeah, it's probably just one that's not going to occur to me straight away. Yeah. Because, yeah, Sapphire's not necessarily my bag baby no that's understandable that's absolutely fine um but good pick good pick nonetheless it's been all mm. uh, it's been a while since we've we've not been held in our head in like oh <laughs> no good, why did it. he do that it was good it was good to pick something i mean you know just because like i say i'd i at that time had come around again and i wanted to watch it I thought, oh yeah some I'd, I'd seen it somewhere and i thought yeah. oh you know what i've not seen that in a while it'd be good to watch that and if i'm gonna watch it it'd be good to do it for the pod and yeah, because yeah. it's been a while since we've done something good. I'd say, oh, good, yeah, unarguably classic, good. Classic. I think yeah, it is absolutely. a classic. I think anybody that likes their horror and knows their horror will agree that that it, it's the the thing is good. I don't think there's mm-hmm. anybody out there that says the thing is a rubbish film. Because of the ending, we don't know. It's a rubbish uh, film. Even, <laughs> even, even you know, discussing that, it's still people still enjoy it, don't they? They still like it. Yeah, they just disagree on how it ends. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I definitely, I don't, yeah, I'd always recommend it. It was a good watch. I'm glad to have watched it again and uh, ref- refresh it in my memory for a, a, a little while longer. Yeah, good shout, good shout. Um, okay, next week. Next week. Back to the America's favorite dysfunctional family. Damn. We're into the good stuff. We're into the good stuff next week. It's five and six, isn't it? Yeah. Treehouse yep. of Horror five and six. Very, very much looking forward to that. Let's very. have a. Let's just have a quick. It's the Shinning. It is the Shinning. It is the Shinning. So, yeah, we've got the Shinning. Um, Sound of Thunder. I don't remember that one off the title. Can't Sound of Thunder? Is. Yeah. Uh, the, the actual Simpsons. Sorry. The actual Simpsons title is Time and Punishment. Oh, that is um, that where Homer has the um, toaster? And he goes through time. Oh, it will be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yes, I think it will be. Yeah. Um Nightmare a Nightmare Cafeteria, the Silent Green parody. Oh. Um and then Hasn't they got Freddy as a Willy? Yes. Oh man. Uh yes. Part six we have Attack of the Fifty Foot Eyesores, which is I think when all the advertising Oh yeah uh, <laughs> advertising uh billboard statues come to life. Yep. Um Nightmare and Evergreen Terrace, which is the Nightmare on Elm Street parody. Superb. Um, and Homer Cubed. Oh, the 3D. 3D show? Oh, the superb. 3D one, which ends with the porno- pornographic cake <laughs> shop. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, I think wait. they are two. Cla- I think they are two classic Treehouse yeah. episodes. Again, I mean, we'll, we'll cover this in the episode, but I think that Nightmare on Elm Street one is an episode that sticks out yeah. specifically in my mind as being a, a Treehouse of Horror. Like, classic stalwart classic yeah. yeah right well we're gonna have a good fun with that next week um we've got treehouse horror one and two and three and four you can check out here if you've made it this far in the youtube video but also if you're listening to audio go check it out on spotify apple google samsung amazon podbean that's it um all by nice. searching the drag cast and you can also find where as i mentioned earlier we finished we finished we finally finished our nearly year-long venture into the monsters of universal all eight episodes are on the channel and on yep. all those audio devices you can go check out all our reviews of the classics um we finished with creature from the black lagoon last week um to, what else we got coming in april comedy and horror i'm we've gonna start any... a discussion episode yeah it's a while yeah. again it's a while since we've done a, a topic discussion rather than a film yeah. discussion so we've gone for quite a big genre sub genre i think yeah i've got some homework to do on that a I've few more a films to watch too. on that. Yeah, <laughs> have to watch there. every single comedy horror, but get a few more. No, in. of course not. But there's a couple that I'd like to yeah. revisit, and a couple that I've had on a list for a while that I think have looked look like they're worth a worth a pump. 
And we cap off April with a a double feature. It will be a double feature, which we need to pick off screen soon and watch. Yes. <laughs> so we've got a lot of work to do in April. We've got a lot of films to watch. Well, we do. But, we really it, do. but they should... Uh, produce gold. I'm hoping. I think so. It's, they should we've got produce gold. Ongoing, ongoing episodes, ongoing at series with our yeah. Simpsons. We've got the start of a new series with the Raven Size Coffin picks. Still waiting for a name. <laughs> it's never. We're never going to get one. Always no, going to be the Raven Size Coffin Horror Tomball the Spectacular. Yeah. Classic. And... <laughs> Um, I've instantly forgotten. Oh, and it's got a lot of discussion. <laughs> the one we topic. just talked about. Um, oh, and hopefully, I get a memory back. Um, and yes, uh, a discussion topic. So yeah, something that we've not done for a while, which will be good to revisit. So yeah, yes, you we spoil you, spoil oh, you, lucky people. We do, we do, we do, we do, we do, we do. Um, yeah. So thank you for listening for today, folks. Um, there's nothing else we need to bring to the table, is there? I, I mean, you can email us at the Dreadcast Podcast at gmail dot com if you so wish. Do about that. Do you want to have a quick rummage in the in the mailbag, Tom? To see if let see me if move the anything. moths out of the way first. <laughs> the dust balls. <laughs> I was very near. I very nearly wasn't going to bother because <laughs> unfortunately nobody ever. Emailed. Oh, we have something. Oh, we do. Oh, brilliant! But uh, it seemed like you were angling for me to mention it there, so. I thought about our day. Okay, I think we've been signed up to some stuff. Okay. Um, <laughs> Brilliant. Not maliciously. <laughs> this looks like something related to Linktree. I'm not going to read that. It's, it's somebody having a wheeze at our Ah, experience. Mike. From tiresome slash retro. retro oh, yes. Hello, Mike. With, with the subject, big baby poo-poo pants. Okay. So, Mike <laughs> writes in to say and where can you send them in by the way again just to uh, the dreadcast know. podcast at gmail.com send your horror questions slash trivia slash opinions on anything in good day gents it is i mike firstly good i tried day, to send mike. this email on 19th of february but aiden fucked me by saying pod instead of podcast for god's sake aiden oh i'm so terribly sorry i thought i'd share this with you as i'm not sure if you would have this had if you would have had this thought before I understand you probably think most of your listeners are massive horror fans and thus they want to hear more chat about their favourite films. However, I do enjoy the genre. Brackets, Scream is my favourite horror franchise. But I actually very rarely watch horror movies. I haven't okay. even seen many slash most of the classics that you fellas chat about. Oh, this okay. is because I'm a big baby poo-poo pants. <laughs> the title. <laughs> There's the title. He said the thing. He said the thing. I said the thing. Um, <laughs> I get scared and generally don't enjoy that feeling. The mm -hmm. fabulous news is I get to experience the movies and storylines through your podcast, and very rarely I may even watch the movie you guys have been talking about based on your description slash review. I did this with Event Horizon. Very older episode. Thanks for letting me experience these movies, even though I'm a big baby poopy pants and don't watch them. Much love, Mike. Oh, well, that's Thank great. you very much. That, that is something I had not considered, to no. be honest, because, yeah, I think the, the sort of initial reaction or thought is... Well, nobody's listening to a horror podcast if they're not interested in horror. Yeah. And it, no, it, it didn't ever occur to me that people that, for whatever reason, weren't going to watch the films would get a kick out of hearing about them. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm grateful for any listeners that we have. And I always Absolutely. assume... Uh, I, I assume it's people do it in the same thought process I kind of do with reviews. I will only listen to other reviews of movies I've seen. I'm not going to listen to a review of a movie I've not seen mm -hmm. or a Let's Play, for example, of a game I've not played. Sure. But I think I appreciate even more people that will tune into this to listen to our thoughts on a film and then check it out themselves. Because then mm -hmm. I, I feel like we've kind of, hopefully we've spurred people on. I, hope, I feel like we've done a good job to... Yeah. I'd, I hope you know, we have I'd... anyway. I mean that's yeah that's I agree with that. that's a hope for me as well that we're introduce we're potentially introducing people to things that they've um, yeah. either missed out on or get people will consider giving something a chance that they might have overlooked previously. Definitely. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's great that we can also provide a a service to people that maybe aren't going to watch a film, like people anyway. taking on our 
hopefully people take it on our trust and word of advice to films yeah. they may have gone oh, i don't know about that we do a oh, talk, just... we discuss it they watch it and the opinion has changed mm -hmm. so I'm oh, they're just interested to, to hear, you know they're just interested to hear about what a film's about and anyway so yeah no thank you very much for the yes. message mate that's great it's really really good yeah. it's like say it's always good to hear from anybody apologies for the uh cock up with the old um <laughs> Don't send email stuff address to the there, podcast. Which is the Dreadcast Podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, don't send um, stuff to the pod one. <laughs> um But yeah, that's that's something that we can we can consider going forward that we are Definitely. helping helping big baby poo poo pants. <laughs> yeah, all of them. All of them. <laughs> all the there. all the big baby poo poo pants yeah. out there. We're we're, uh, we're helping you guys out by holding your hand as we, we walk through the the haunted forest of horror movies or that one something. yeah that one yep so yeah all right well thank you mike and yeah you can send your your correspondence into the dreadcast podcast at gmail.com gmail. gmail. yes and as i say you can find us in all those other places all the audio platforms and the tiktok and the instagram and the twitter at the underscore dreadcast and i believe that's it so until next time with the simpsons um, Adios, amigos. take care everyone and we will see you next time. Peace. Bye.